This video is about testing my omnidirectional ball shaped wheeled vehicle. I built this in the last few weeks and you can check out the videos in my channel and most of this footage is from EMF Camp 2022 and that's a camping event for makers and tinkerers and hackers and people like that. Everyone gets together in a field near Eastnor in England for a four day event and there's lots of other stuff going on that we'll look at later in the video. If you can hear a background humming sound, that's the three 200 kilowatt generators that powered the whole site, so there's not much I can do about that, I'm afraid. I brought my Open Dog 3 and I set up camp with Matt Denton, who brought his giant Lego electric go kart. The build for my omnidirectional vehicle has been two weeks and the previous two weeks in my channel. There's all sorts of materials have gone into this to make these omnidirectional ball wheels, and these are a larger version of a project I did almost exactly a year ago, and at the time everybody said I should make one big enough to ride on, so here it is. We've got some CNC aluminium gone into it, welded steel, 3D printing, CNC plywood, and lots of other techniques have come together to make these ball wheels, which are two hemispheres that can run freely in one direction and they're powered in the other and that gives us an omnidirectional wheel but instead of having normal omni wheels we've got ball shaped wheels. Now I tested this in the workshop floor and it seemed to run pretty well. There are several caveats with this including the little wheels in the ends of the hemispheres but everyone wanted to see it go off road and see what it was like on multi-terrain so this seemed like a great event to test it. Well it seems to run on grass okay without me on it. I was pretty sure that the hemispheres of the wheels were going to get stuck with those little wheels when it rolled onto them, but so far everything's pretty good and it also doesn't seem to get caught up in the tape that's there, which is basically marking out the fire lanes for camping. But what about if I ride on it? I do have three 1500 watt motors powering each of three of the wheels, but instead of running them on a 12S LiPo I'm running them on 6S, so I'm actually doing half the voltage, which means I'm only driving quarter of the power. They're limited to 20 amps an axis anyway, about 24 or 25 volts. The yellow battery you can see on the front is powering the whole thing, which is a 4 amp hour 65C battery. But I still seem to have enough torque to drive me on grass, which is pretty good. So being a bit less cautious, obviously I can move in all directions. Now with this, when I move sideways, all three wheels turn. But if I go forwards and backwards, then only the back two turn. So that's how omnidirectional vehicles work. With all three wheels turning, there's much less probability of driving on the little wheels in the peak of the hemispheres as well. As expected, there is some grass stuck in the wheels, but it hasn't gone into the little wheels. It's just stuck on those pointy bits on the peak of the hemispheres. So it's time to go for a drive round EMF camp, which is actually quite a big site. So I can drive and hold the selfie stick in the other hand, but I actually need two hands to drive because it's a three axis machine. Each of my joysticks is actually three axis, but the machine is still programmed for rotation on the left hand stick, which makes it much easier to drive with two hands than trying to do everything with one hand. So I had to keep stopping and then rotating when I wanted to. I think there is some slippage on the ground at certain points on those wheels, so I'm getting some rotation that I don't want as well. But it still seems to be running okay on grass. The machine is much more agile, of course, without a person in it, so it makes quite a good robotic platform for some quite big machine. So I almost want to have another top for it with robot arms or something like that on it. If you can think of accessories I can add, then put them in the comments below. I decided to attach the selfie stick to the chair. Now it's a GoPro Hero 9 which has got super stabilisation but the stick is quite wobbly and the chair is quite wobbly. It's actually much worse on these walkways that are installed which are rigid because there's a split between the two halves of the hemisphere on those wheels which is essentially a flat thing then when you roll over it there's a bit of a bump as well as the wheels of course being made of CNC plywood interlocked so they're not actually perfect spheres or perfect hemispheres in any way. Also, there are loads of big gaps between the bits of the walkway and some of them have steps in. So altogether, the footage is a bit wobbly. So I was driving around quite a lot and stopping to show people and doing all sorts of things. But in the end, I decided the best thing to do would probably be to drive on the grass because it was a much smoother ride. The grass was a bit longer over here, but it still seems to work perfectly well, so that's pretty good. If it looks like the camera isn't straight, it in fact is, but the ground is sloped. This whole site slopes from the right down to the left, so there's a bit of a hill to go up. But I still seem to have plenty of power to drive up and down it and drive in any direction, even if I'm only using two wheels. Although most of the time I tried to go sideways.
There weren't too many obstacles to drive over, but right down by the generator there were quite a few of these fat cables coming out, so I tried driving backwards and forwards over that a couple of times. I'm not actually in the chair at this point, but it seems to handle it perfectly well. Down the bottom of the site near the ponds, the ground was even lumpier, so going sideways was definitely required, and I was kind of twisting and turning there to get it to go in the right direction, because some of the wheels were struggling a bit, but it seems to work alright. EMF camp's a great place to spot unusual vehicles, including this eight-legged walking machine, which appears to have some sort of disco and a lighting installation on the back of it. All sorts of people have brought their projects, including this autonomous vehicle with a LiDAR and vision recognition. And this is Totem Recall, who you should check out on Twitter. Up at the top of the site were where all the hackers hang out, so there's the hardware hacking area and the hacker bus where you can go to fix your thing, and then we're invited into a mysterious tent to meet some elite hackers. Some of their identities have been obscured at their request. They had all sorts of high power computing equipment and an AVO. This little car was driving around the site and it's called Roma.fun. All you have to do is scan the QR code and use the access point name there to attach to its Wi-Fi presumably, and then you can drive it around with a web page and have a look through the cameras. I also have my own installation in a container in the null sector which we'll take a look at more later in the video. This is one of my performance robots and I built two of these robots in 2019 specifically to take to events. I did one event and then we know what happened. So I'm driving this off PoseNet, which is a machine learning model, which knows what your pose is, and then I had the robots running a chase of motions vaguely in that direction. So basically the robot dances so you don't have to. You can see it's tracking there, and basically we had several arm positions on the screen on the left so people could work out what to do, and most of the time it worked okay. I also took Open Dog 3 and did a couple of demos while the weather was good. I've already tested this in my garden, of course, in the last video and have it walk over bits of wood and random things, so it handled the grass and any other obstacles okay, mostly. So Matt brought his giant Lego electric go-kart, he put wheel extensions on so he had more ground clearance and also bigger motors to drive the bigger circumference with more torque. And to start with, this was pretty amazing. He managed to drift on grass, and bear in mind the wheel extensions are made of rigid PLA even though the inner tyres they fit on are TPU. So that seemed absolutely bonkers, but then it started to make a rather strange high-pitched whizzing sound that didn't sound very good. On closer inspection, what had actually happened was that the higher torque motor had actually stripped all the teeth off the drive belt, and the belt was just freewheeling. So he was going to take it round the Hacky Racers, which was a racetrack basically with some vehicles that have to be a specific size and power to enter, and then people build them and race them. The Lego go karts well over the size and power, but they said we could drive round anyway. I dare go over there because I think we'll get there and it will just be really hard to come back. What annoying, I've got to take more spares with us. Doesn't want to pull away with only one motor. It always feels like this one's not working. But what else goes on at EMF camp? Well, if you like FI, you're in for a treat. These are some installations built into the Knoll sector which you could operate by pressing buttons. So there were kids and families there pressing buttons and operating these flamethrowers. We also had fairly regular evening demos of the fire tornado. Then we heard a familiar sound coming from one of the big marquees. It's Sam. What? Sam, look, my no computer. No, isn't it? Yes, it was Sam from Look Mum No Computer with all of his synths. I'd actually seen him earlier in the day and he didn't mention he was performing, so it was a bit of a surprise. He does an audience interactive show where people come on the stage and help him play music and various other things with synths and weird music generation things. <laughs> The 
Salt Sector is a massive installation in a massive marquee with lasers and fire coming out. Inside, everything was done up as an abandoned underwater research base. This whole thing was set up for the four day event and it was only open for three afternoons and evenings and then they tear the whole thing down again so quite a lot of effort has gone into this. Inside there were lots of walls which are actually pretty rigid, we tried pushing on them and it was built fairly substantially. There was a bar and then various rooms with installations in and various interactive things. Like this one which controlled video and audio from your motions from a Kinect camera. I got someone to volunteer demoing it who's quite happy to be in my video. Most of the other installations were interactive and some people were having a lot of fun. If we go through the bar area and out the back there was a container city with about 10 different containers with installations in. One of those was a scanning electron microscope and you could take things to look at with it. A scanning electron microscope uses a beam of electrons to actually look at the surface of the object instead of light so you can get quite high resolution. I also have my own installation I mentioned earlier which I eventually managed to get properly working. I had to bring some other lights down because it suffered really badly in low light and also I fixed a small coding issue which meant it wouldn't recognise people properly anymore. So if you were there and it wasn't working properly, it worked in the end on Sunday night from about 11pm till everything shut down at 2am. And there was also a massive club floor with DJs and lasers and some makers that you may know from social media. And since everything was themed as an abandoned underwater research base, I thought I should get an appropriate costume. I'm not really sure how divers drink their drinks though, because it's incredibly difficult to poke the glass through the hole in the front. It did actually come with a front that you can put on and take off, which I had to take off of course to drink, but also it was shaped a bit like a lens which made it even harder to see what was going on. Nailed it! That wasn't the end of the night though because we found a karaoke tent and once I managed to get the chair unstuck from my diving belt I decided to do a song. I wanted to sing Queen Don't Stop Me Now but when the music came on... Hey. 